welcome everybody. So come on in, come on into the show. And today is going to be a really good show. I know it's been a little while and we are going to talk about quite a few things. We're going to talk about, let's see, we're going to talk about the new courses and the new membership that I've created. We're going to talk about my brutal five, uh, 40 yard dash. We are going to talk about finding ice time and how I was able to kind of luck out and find some. Talk about balancing your days and fitting in creativity, work, and learning. And then we're going to talk about building your hockey brand. And building your hockey brand is going to be the focus of today's lesson. So what we're going to do is we got to get started. And you know we got to get things started off right. So... So won't you join me now for the always exciting, always enlightening dopamine hit of the day. It's as good as scoring the winning goal in overtime to win the Stanley Cup. All you need is water, Gatorade, or green powder, BioSteel protein, or anything in between. So grab your favorite sports drink. I prefer water with a little bit of Himalayan sea salt. And won't you join me now for the simultaneous sip. And it happens now. hydrating so that's definitely something you want to be doing every single day is continuing to hydrate so it's a little reminder so let's go over the purpose of really the reason why we're doing this entire podcast and why I do everything I do first of all I want to bring honest conversation to hockey and I want to bring it to life for people who want to succeed in both on and off the ice No more secrets, no more hiding the truth and hiding things that are important and that players need to know. And I want to push the convo forward. I want to talk about culture, hockey culture, and things all around that. I want to talk about hockey development. I want to talk about relationships within hockey and outside. I want to talk about spirituality, diet, training, and anything else that we come up with. And I want to build a community of driven players to help us all love the game more and perform at our best. And hopefully, every single session, you leave inspired, you leave informed, you leave entertained, you leave with actionable systems and items you can do, and you leave with a new filter on reality. And basically, every single thing that I do is crafted and designed to help you turn your hockey and your life into a game that you can control, you can enjoy, and you can win at. And please, leave me feedback. That is a massive thing. So please leave feedback by giving us a rating and letting us know what you thought. It's really easy to do if you just go into Apple Podcasts, just scroll to the bottom of my page, and just hit whatever star you think, honestly, that my content is. And that gives us a lot of feedback and really helps other people to learn what the podcast is like. You can send us a DM or send me a DM and let me know what you think. Let me know the questions you want answered next or leave a comment on any of my posts on Instagram, on Facebook and ask that question that you want. And if it's on one of the comments, it's for sure going to be answered in one of the next upcoming pieces of content. So let's talk about the updates. So first of all, we have the new courses that we've built for the identity training system coming out now so we have the hockey meditation course 2.0 so really for anybody who's looking to just master their mind in a more basic way being able to improve their focus improve their concentration and be able to have an easy way to deal with emotions how to deal with stress it's really the perfect thing it's designed just for that so if that's something that you're considering definitely take that step forward try it out And trust me, you're going to get so much out of it. There's a 50-day meditation, 10 minutes a day that you can do that's going to just skyrocket your focus and your ability to be present. And the other course that's about to be coming out very, very soon within the next about week, um, actually, I believe it's available now, and it's just in the process of being touched up, is the visualization course. So what is the visualization course? Well, 
this is put together and it's designed to really lay out the foundation of how to work on on ice skills in your mind teaching you how to create the rink of the mind this is something we talked about before and then teaching you how to work on different elements whether it's improving speed by actually practicing the the actual mechanics and movements in your head and there's tons of studies and research that have shown that you actually get strength and muscle development through these practices so it's the same process that we believe goes with speed and that goes with all the different skills you want to work on it's going to sharpen and crisp up these skills and where we've designed a system and laid out the visualization process for you second we have or actually third is we have the new membership so this is the hockey identity 2.0 membership so this is forty nine ninety seven a month and you get access to a coaching call every single week which if it's a one-on-one -on -one session it's going to be worth like a hundred plus dollars but you're going to get four of those every month with quite a small group it's a very condensed group this is intentionally kept small and each week we work on this stuff we work on all the questions and we progress you through we build your system out and we help you with the entire hockey development process this goes from mechanics to off ice strength training to diet to cardio to speed whatever it is we help you put it all together and this is a massive opportunity and this the price of the course and the price of membership is is really only going to go up and one big thing with this is that when you buy the membership at this price you're locked in and not only that but you also get access to all of the courses for that 49.97 per month so you get lifetime access to those as long as you stay in the membership so that kind of covers the stuff that I've created now let's talk about a few things that are kind of going on in my life that you might find interesting so first of all my brutal 40 time so if anybody knows if you look at football is really the main one and I'm trying to think of other sports that really measure it but I think it's mainly football that they measure the 40 yard dash and I wanted to time it so I timed it myself a few times and I also had my dad time it he happened to be free at the time so I figured why not and what was insane and what I really didn't expect was that my 40 time is quite off so a really good 40 time for an elite um, running back is around a 4-4 or 4-5 I believe I think it's like a 4-4-8 or 4-9 and <clears throat> I want you to guess what mine was it was a 5.94 <laughs> so basically a full second and a half slower than these elite runners so I don't know what most runners ability is and what what somebody who's just relatively fast runs the, the like runs it in but I'm guessing that a 594 is pretty weak and I think a lot of this comes from the fact that I don't practice sprinting very much and I'm realizing I probably should I probably should get into that so something I recommend is testing out your 40 time and see what it's like and then let me know because I want to kind of know if you're a fast player in junior or college I want to be able to kind of compare where I'm at with that and I think it's kind of a helpful thing to kind of test out and see what your speed is like and I'm gonna do this with on ice stuff too so measure my ability to skate from end to end or measure my ability to skate from let's say goal line to far blue line or something like that it's kind of a realistic distance to cover and I kind of want to start measuring because I think measurement is such a massive thing you can't you can't fake out the the time if you time it right it's that's what your speed is so something I'm actually probably gonna be adding to the membership relatively soon is some speed training work I'm gonna build a course helping you with cardio speed and breathing and with that a major fact or factor with this is gonna be making sure that you're measuring the time because if you're not you're gonna miss a lot and I think a lot of people kinda bullshit themselves and it holds them back because they don't put that stuff in and I think that's a massive element I think it's something huge that you should do is you should be measuring stuff you should be measuring how long it takes you to let's say 
let's say you want to measure your ability to hold your breath for CO2 tolerance, for example. That's something we'll talk about in the future is breath holding. Um, test out what that is. Test out your bolt score and see what it is. Because I know for me, mine was really weak. And it was a big reminder to me that my ability to process oxygen is weak. And I got to improve that. So even though my cardio isn't too bad, my actual CO2 tolerance and my oxygen ability, my oxygen processing is just terrible. So I got to bring that up. Um, the next thing. Finding a little ice. So I was finally able to find some ice time. I was able to get out with a goalie coach and get some shooting in the last couple weeks. And it's such a great opportunity to get extra ice like that. And obviously I can't work on like full striding because it is a small ice. But anytime you can get any extra little work like that and you can fit it into your schedule. Luckily I get two hours of sessions with them each week. So I'm kind of easing myself into the process. But if you can do that, if you can find someone to go shoot with, like a goalie coach, or if you can just find some kind of way you can help on the ice. And even if you're a coach and you help out with somebody teaching, it could be massive because if you don't have the money to kind of drop on that, for me, I don't want to be kind of investing a major amount because I have several things I'm kind of investing in right now. And I can't really be putting like a hundred plus dollars an hour into skating. So finding these places where I can get extra ice. And then once I get closer to our NCAA camp, I can start to kind of prep and start to get on the ice a little more, maybe put in a couple extra dollars into that. Then once we get into the actual skates, then we kind of advance and we have about a month and a half to really prep for the season. So give yourself the opportunity to just touch up some little skills if you can and find someone that you can help on the ice as opposed to being taught. <clears throat> um, the next thing, uh, roller blades and Mars blades. So this is something that not a lot of people talk about a ton, but I think it's something really worth getting an honest review and an honest um, conversation about, or really setting that up, is that <clears throat> roller blades are pretty effective if you have comfortable ones that are similar to a real skate. And you can work on really basic things. You can work on just general mechanics, which aren't exactly the same, but you can get a lot out of it. And I think that's a massive thing that you can do is if you can work on the mechanics, you can work on different stride patterns, you can work on um, just getting a more improved muscle endurance, for example, and doing uh, long distance rollerblading. I know a couple friends. Um, I know Sean Ross, who was on the podcast previously, he was really big into that and he loved that. So consider if that is something that might work for you because rollerblades are a great option. Now, I have an interesting thought on the comparison between rollerblades and Mars blades because a lot of people kind of hype up the Mars blades to be this like be all end all of off ice skating and I do think that they're good and I do think that if you have like $350 extra I, I think that they're worth it but there's more to it than that because the thing with Mars blades is that they have a rocker on them right so they kind of rock back and forth and it's not really as good as you think it it's helpful because it does kind of simulate the feeling of having like a toe flick but when you're skating on like a like a off ice surface the the toe flick and the the extension of the foot and the edge work it just doesn't feel the same because you're kind of slipping when you're skating your edge is actually in the ice a little bit and that's what gives you the grip but when you're rollerblading it's not like that and it's kind of strange. And I put the Mars Blades on some good skates now. I used to have them on like skates that I didn't like as much. Um, so that was definitely a factor. So I put them in and I'm about to try that out probably today or in the, in the upcoming days. But <laughs> it's weird because if you just have money to spend, the Mars Blades I think are worth it. But if not, you can get like a pretty similar effect from just using rollerblades. And 
yeah, so just doing good drills on those, doing stuff with, with the pucks and working on balance, working on quick feet and ability to adjust your foot placement. I think you get the same kind of benefit for roller blades or Mars blades. So again, a big thing we're trying to do on this podcast is distinguish kind of the, the truth out of things. I think a lot of people are kind of trying to market you something. So they're, they're telling you something that's like pretty true, but at the same time, there's still some factors that kind of get left out and don't get mentioned as much. And I think with Mars blades, what gets left out is that there are definitely a benefit but you don't need them and keep that in mind when you're considering purchasing the mars blades is if you got the extra money spend it but if not you don't have to so don't feel like you're not going to be able to develop if you don't get them okay and the final thing on the updates um balancing days and fitting in creativity work and learning so first of all you may hear my dogs in the background Unfortunately, there's not really much way around kind of planning for um, avoiding them making noise because they're always in the background doing stuff. So um, keeping that in mind. Um, so the idea of creativity, work, and learning. Creativity is producing something new. And this is an important distinguish distinguishment that I made last night, actually, is you want to make time for being creative whether that's creative on the ice, coming up with new moves and new ideas of drills and concepts that you want to practice, whether that's business work. For me, I'm constantly always trying to be creative with my days um, and coming up with new stuff. But then you also want to make sure you're doing work. So that's whether that's cardio work, whether that's stretching or some kind of repetitive thing that you know you just need to get done. For me, it's building courses for the business and then making sure I get in the routine edge work, the routine shooting stuff, and making sure you're putting in that work consistently. And then same thing with learning. Learning is bringing in new content so that you can be more creative and you can expand on the things that you're working on. And you have to make time for all three of these in your schedule. Now, this doesn't have to be every single day. Every day you don't have to practice all three of these. But let me give you what I think is the best kind of way to do it. And let this hopefully just inspire you to consider what to do is, first of all, creativity. This is a massive, massive thing because you want to make sure you're implementing it consistently. So what do I do for that? Well, I try to spend at least an hour a day and I schedule it in somewhere that I'm being creative about some element. So I'm always factoring that in, always making at least an hour or with my skates, I'm spending at least 10 minutes just being creative, trying new stuff. And it's pretty simple. Same thing with work. With work, I try to put that earlier in the day before I do any creative work, just to try to get it kind of out of the way. So let's say I'm recording a, um, let's say I'm recording a podcast, for example. That's combination of kind of creativity and work but I consider that something that I need to get done and that's an important element of things I need done so I kind of try to make sure that I fit that in early and get it consistently done so that when I get to creativity okay now I got some time I can kind of relax the mind kind of do a more calmed approach to it so fitting in that work initially kind of gives you the opportunity to then do the other stuff and then kind of with learning, what I like to do is I like to listen to a podcast or audiobook. the first thing I do when I wake up. So work is what I do the second I start doing something productive, more or less. But with learning, I'll listen to a podcast or audiobook for the first couple, probably half an hour of the day as I make my food. I kind of go into that zone. I throw on some noise canceling headphones. I listen to those. I do my little cleanup around the house and then boom. I listen to that and I'm just getting all that kind of content kind of absorbing into my mind right away. And then I'll finish off the day with that as well. So I get done all my stuff. If I'm going to watch TV that night, before I watch TV, spend half an hour or so reading a book, listening to an audio book or listening to a podcast. And I find that super helpful and I really like that approach. So it's kind of 
easy to allow that all to kind of flow in. And then the final thing that we want to add on this that I haven't mentioned is relaxation recovery. <clears throat> so for me, what I like to do is at the beginning of the day, I always try to do a meditation session. So today, I'm, for some reason, I didn't start the day with meditation. But often what I'll do right before I do that work is just throw in a quick 10 minute meditation. And then at the end of the day, I will watch some TV. I will hang out, watch a movie or something like that. But I'll do something like completely relaxing. I'll hang out with friends for a few hours. And the key with that is giving your mind a little rejuvenation before sleep. Give yourself an opportunity to just kind of completely let go. So I think that's an important element to uh, really keep in mind. Again, I think you can probably hear the cats in the background, so um, apologize for that, but unfortunately can't avoid that. So, all right. <clears throat> so this is on the probably on the podcast. The podcast will probably get access to this, but YouTube probably won't be. Um, this section will actually be cut out, and this will be given directly to my membership. So, members, this is your personal 